While attending Seattle's prestigious Lakeside Prep School, Bill Gates met Paul Allen, an upperclassman who shared his obsession with computers. They bonded by writing software code together, and somewhat competitive, Paul Allen and Bill Gates. Uh, they every now and then would have fights. At one point, Paul Allen kicked uh, Bill Gates, who was a little bit younger, off of uh, the little group they had as writing software. But then he realized that he needed Gates back. He couldn't do it without him. And Gates said, well, I'm happy to come back, but this time I'm going to be in charge. By 1970, when Bill was just 15, he and Paul Allen went into business together. The two boys netted $20,000 with Trafo Data, a computerized program they created to measure traffic flow in the Seattle area. Although Bill had the luxury of family money, he was determined from the start to make his own fortune. The father of one of Bill's boyhood friends said Bill always had a nose for the dollar. Even as a kid, uh, he knew the value of a contract and even had a contract to uh, use his older sister's baseball mitt. <laughs> that was signed in a legal document. In the summer of 1972, at the age of 17, Bill went to Washington, D.C. to work as a Senate page. This exposure to politics and government would come in handy later on. Back home that fall, he took a leave of absence from school when he and Paul Allen got their first real jobs with a computer company. They began talking about starting their own company, but the Gates insisted that their son finish high school and attend college. His mother used to worry that he was socially awkward. Well, maybe he was, but he had other things on his mind, and he was not rude, he was not abrupt. He was marching to a different drummer. He's a genius, and he has a different agenda. Bill graduated from Lakeside in 1973, and his parents took great pride in his acceptance at Harvard University. So he left Seattle and headed east to Cambridge, Massachusetts. As a freshman at Harvard, he thought briefly about preparing for a career in law, but no course of study ignited his imagination like his work with the computer. Bill was somebody who was always very determined to do what he was interested in doing. The things that he was less interested in, which often included his academic classes, he tended simply to coast and get by on talent. Remember there was a uh, course in Introduction to Greek Literature where he'd really done, as best as I could tell, none of the uh, work during the year. Stayed up all night the night before the exam, slept through part of the exam, and still got a B. It was not surprising that Gates fell asleep in an exam. Between classes and time spent at the Harvard Computer Center, he seemed to be on the go 24 hours a day. I mean, he was always very focused on whatever it was that he was doing. He could come into his room, not get undressed, just kind of lie down on his bed, which of course would be not made because he had never had time for that, and just fall asleep. Door open, fully clothed, lie down, sleep, and then when he's refreshed, boom, back up at it and whatever the next thing was. Bill paused long enough to make some lasting friendships at Harvard, but his social life was not a priority. He dated only occasionally, with varying degrees of success. I interviewed several women who had dated Bill just briefly, and one told me the very, que very first question Bill asked her was, what did you score on your SAT test? You know, this is not exactly, you know, what a, what a, what a young woman wants to hear. Um, for Bill Gates, though, he had scored a perfect 800 on his, on his math portion of the SAT, and, and this was a matter of pride with him, and he wanted to make sure whoever he was dating you know, had scored a pretty high, pretty high grade. Bill did shine in math, but true to form, when he found out that he was not the number one math student at Harvard, he decided against becoming a mathematician. While he kept his academic options open, he picked up some new skills outside of class. I spent a great deal of time playing uh, pinball video games and uh, especially poker, which was something that we all, we all did a lot of back in college. But it was Paul Allen, Bill's former schoolmate and business partner, who delivered Gates' biggest stroke of luck. Allen had moved to Boston from Seattle for a job. In December of 1974, he picked up a magazine in Harvard Square. The cover of Popular Electronics announced the arrival of the world's first mini-computer kit, the Altair 8800. He rushed to show it to Bill. Gates and Allen knew instantly that the day of the personal computer had arrived.
they saw that this was going to be an incredible force, an incredible dynamic for the society, and recognized the, the moment. The Altair was made by a small company in Albuquerque, New Mexico, not far from the former atomic testing grounds at Alamogordo. Ed Roberts, who ran the company, was looking for someone to create software to run on his unique little computer. Gates and Allen convinced him that they were the ones who could do it and worked day and night at the Harvard Computer Center for two months. In February of 1975, Paul Allen went to Albuquerque to test the program he and Gates had completed. When he loaded the Altair with what Bill Gates called the coolest code I ever wrote, it worked. The importance of that moment would change Bill Gates and the software industry forever.